Hello again, friends. So today I'm going to show you how we can accept user input in Java. We will need the help of what is called a scanner. A scanner is an object that allows us to accept user input in Java. However, in order to use a scanner, we actually need to import it from the certain package called utilities or util. At the top of our Java file, we're going to write the following statement. Import Java dot util. This is a package dot scanner. Scanner is a class. So make sure you have this import at the top before we get started. To sum up programming, we typically accept input, process it, then produce output. So that's why accepting user input is important. We would like to do something with the input. So to accept user input, we're going to create a scanner object. So type this scanner. That's the name of the class scanner. That's going to be the name of the object we'll be working with. Do pay attention to the capitalization. Our scanner object is all lowercase characters. Whereas in the first scanner has an uppercase S scanner scanner equals new scanner. Add a set of parentheses, then a semicolon. Within the set of parentheses, we're going to type system.in. Our scanner object can read user input. However, it is good practice if you create a scanner object. At the end of your program, when you're done, we're going to take our scanner object and use the close method. So scanner.close parentheses semicolon. If you don't close your scanner, it can lead to unexpected behavior. For example, let's say that we read a file. Well, after we're done reading the file, we'll want to close the file. When we open something, we typically want to close it. We're going to create a prompt within our console that says enter your name, then a user will be able to type in their name. We'll need a user prompt to work with. So let's say system.out.println, enter your name. After receiving this prompt, a user is going to be able to type in their name. We're going to use our scanner object, scanner dot next line parentheses semicolon. So a user is going to be able to type in a string of text. So let's type in our full name, then hit enter. However, with this user input, we're not doing anything with it. So let's assign it to a variable. So with our line, of scanner dot next line, we will declare a variable and assign it string name equals scanner dot next line. We have declaration and assignment, those two steps. And then once we have our name, let's output it system dot out dot print line. Let's say hello plus name. So enter your name type in your full name, hit enter, and the output should be hello, whatever your first and last name is. Now, if you prefer, we can put the input on the same line as the prompt. We're going to use print instead of print line. Print line will add a new line character to the end. So let's stick with print. So the input will be on the same line as the prompt, if you prefer it that way. So the next line method of our scanner object, it reads a string of characters, including any spaces. If you don't want any spaces, you can use next. So if I were to type in my full name with the first and last name separated with the space, we only get the first name. Next doesn't read any spaces. So use what you would prefer. I typically just use next line. To read an integer, there's a different method called next int. This time, let's create a prompt of enter your age. I'll use print instead of print line. We will assign a variable of age. Int age equals use our scanner object, use the built in next int method. Then once we have our integer of age, let's output it system.out.println you are plus our variable age plus years old. 
enter your name, type in your name, enter your age. Oops, I'm going to add a colon and a space after my prompt, just because I think it'll look better. Okay, enter your full name, enter your age. Hello, your name, you are whatever your age is, years old. So that's how to accept an integer. If you were to type in a floating point number or a double, anything that includes a decimal. Now check this out. Our variable of age should be an integer. If we type in something that contains a decimal like a floating point number or a double, let's say that I'm 25.9. Well, we get an error. Here it says we have an error at line 12 where we accept an integer. So if you need a double, there's a next double method of scanners. So this time, let's ask for a GPA. What is your GPA, your grade point average? We will assign a variable that's going to be of the double data type. Double GPA equals, again, use our scanner, use the next double method, and then let's output it system.out.println, your GPA is plus our variable GPA. So again, let's go through the prompts, type in your name, type in your age. What is your GPA? Uh, let's use print instead of print line. Enter your name, enter your age. What is your GPA? Let's say my GPA is 2.1. I'm just barely passing. Hey, C's get degrees, right? Your GPA is the GPA variable. So that's how to accept the double. Use the next double method of scanners. Now, for some reason, if you need a Boolean, Booleans are either true or false. Here's how we can accept that. System.out.println. Let's ask, are you a student? Then I'll add a prompt for true or false. So the user knows to type in one of these instead of yes or no. So we will create a Boolean variable of is student equals use our scanner object. Use the next Boolean method. And then let's output it. System.out.println. Let's say student colon space plus is student. I think an if statement would be better. We'll cover that in a moment. Again, go through the prompts, type in your name, type in your age, type in a GPA. Are you a student, true or false? Let's say that's true. Student, true. And again, I'm gonna use print instead of print line. Not necessary, but I think it looks better. Let's use an if statement instead when checking is student is true or not. So if is student, again, if statements will be a future lesson we'll cover pretty soon. If is student, if that's true, then we will print. Let's print you are enrolled as a student. Else we will print something else. If that's not true, if it's false. You are not enrolled. Okay, enter your name, enter your age, enter a GPA. Are you a student? Let's say that it's false. Okay, we have our name, our age, our GPA, and then we're outputting, you are not enrolled. You are not enrolled in classes because we said false. Now, if we put true, well, then we get the output, you are enrolled as a student. That's how to accept user input of different data types, a few of which include strings, integers, doubles, and Booleans. Now, there's one common issue when accepting an integer or double, then accepting a string. Let me demonstrate. So we have our scanner. Let's say we ask for a user's age. 
enter your age. And I'll make this a print statement instead of print line. Int age equals use our scanner, use the next int method. And then let's ask what the user's favorite color is. Enter your favorite color. We will store that within a variable named color, and it's going to be of the string data type. String color equals use our scanner object, use the next line method. Then we'll output the following. System.out.println you are plus age years old as well as you like the color plus our variable color. Here's what happens. Add to your age, 25, hit enter. Enter your favorite color. You are 25 years old. You like the color. So what's going on here exactly? So when we type in a number, for example, 25, then hit enter, within the input buffer, there's still a new line character because we hit enter. So the next line method is picking up that new line character and using that as the input. So we need to get rid of that new line character. This is a common problem that you might see in Java. If you accept an integer or a double, then accept a string of text. So one way in which we can clear the input buffer to get rid of that new line character is after accepting an integer or a double, we can use our scanner and call the next line method, but don't assign it to anything. That should get rid of that new line character in the input buffer if that problem comes up. So let's try this again. Enter an age, enter a color. You are 25 years old. You like the color red. So if you encounter that problem, I would just call the next line method of your scanner object to clear the input buffer. Now we're going to cover an exercise. In this exercise, we're going to calculate the area of a rectangle. What I like to do when creating a project is declare all of my variables at the top. Again, make sure that you're importing the scanner class. I will create a double variable of width. I'll set that to be zero. And a double variable of height, also zero. And double area, I will set that to be zero. We're going to accept some user input and reassign width and height. So we need a scanner object to accept user input. Scanner scanner equals new scanner, parentheses, semicolon. Within the parentheses, we will type system.in. And again, since we're opening a scanner, it's good practice to close it. I sometimes forget to do that. Scanner.close. We'll create a prompt to tell the user to enter in a width. We can use system.out.println or print. For prompts, I like to use print. Enter the width. We will take our width. We've already declared our width once. We don't need to type the data type again. We can reuse it. Width equals use our scanner object. Use the next double method because we're accepting a double, a width. Let's do this with height. I'll just copy these two lines, then change width to height. All right, let's test it currently. Let's make up some numbers, 3.1 and 4.2. All right, once we have the width and the height, we have to calculate the area. So we're going to take our area variable equals our width times our height. And then let's output it. System.out.println, the area is plus our variable area. So let's say 3.2 and 4.3. The area is 13.76. Let's add a unit of measurement afterwards. After area, we'll add centimeters. 
You could do centimeter squared if you prefer, or you could even add a superscript of two. So if you're on Windows, make sure NumLock is on, hold Alt, then type 0178 on the numpad if you would like a superscript of two. You know, because we're working with areas. So let's say 5.3 and 6.4. The area is 33.92 centimeters squared. All right, everybody, that is how to accept user input in Java. You need to create a scanner object. Be sure to close it at the end of the program. If you don't, it might lead to unexpected behavior. The scanner object does have a few built-in methods for accepting strings, integers, doubles, and booleans. And well, everybody, that is how to accept user input in Java.